Okay, I'm really excited because I got like uh, five things. That's ten. I got five things on the docket to talk to you guys about today. Um, I have a murdering mother from Manhattan in the 30s or 50s, can't remember which. Uh, I have a teen. Oh, you're having some issues? Damn, I'm sorry. I saw earlier your, your uh, audio kept cutting out because I'd hear you and then all of a sudden it would cut out while you were talking. Uh, the playing on systems is kind of like not the best for that. I had to learn that the hard way. Uh, but I got a mother from Manhattan who killed both of her kids. I have a teen accused of assisting a GOP with uh, sourcing children for nefarious sexual needs. Um, I was not winking. <laughs> that felt bad. I was not winking. I was trying to blink some of my mascara out. And then I have uh, Matthew Taylor Coleman, who is the QAnon guy who killed his kids because he believed that his wife passed on reptilian DNA. It's gonna be fun. I got some shit to talk about today. I'll try to wait for anyone else to show up like anyone ever does. State Farm Stupid Let me throw this ad in here so I go ahead and switch over all my uh, camera stuff and shit. De Rico or investigating this matter of the center road. Okay, so nothing new in there. I will be watching that very closely when the 31st rolls around because I would love to know what happens with that asshole. Alright, the murder of Alicia McPhail. Are we able to actually see that? No, I'm covering up most of it. Let's see if I can zoom in and make it a little bit easier. I will move my fist. Okay, no, you can see a little girl, that's fine. All right, so we're going to go on to the Aaron Campbell case that you suggested. Hey, that's what's up, I feel you. I'm, I'm completely a fucking night owl too. Like I'm up till like 4 a.m., but I wake up at 10 a.m. All right. On the 2nd of July, 2018, six-year-old Scottish girl Alicia McPhail was abducted from her bed and murdered by 16-year-old Aaron Campbell. Alicia from Airday, North Lancashire, Lancashire, was three days into a stay with her grandparents on the Isle of Butte when Campbell entered their unlocked home at approximately 2 a.m. The teenager had previously bought cannabis from Alicia's father, Robert, who lived in the house and initially went to steal the drug. Upon finding the child asleep, Campbell picked her up, carried her to an abandoned hotel, had his adult way, and killed her by applying pressure to her face and neck. What, like you just crushed her head? Alicia was reporting missing at 6.23 a.m. and her body was discovered by a member of the public at 8.54. So she, wow, she was only gone for like a couple hours. Adorable. I love how we're going to get the autism hate. Hey, hashtag Twitch do better. It's almost as if when you see certain words in a combination in chats, you should, I don't know, ban them yourself. I shouldn't have to hire my own mods and shit like that. I get you can't, you know, watch every fucking chat, but some shit should just pop up on you. I, yeah, no, I... I love that shit. I can't even be honest about the condition I am legitimately diagnosed with and is actually impeding my fucking life without, you know, the general public just coming up and fucking mocking me for existing. It's, uh, it's fucking beautiful. I've got Nightbot on. 
But the thing is, I, I have had people come in here and talk about also having autism, so it can't blur someone just having autism. And it only uses like singular words, not like whole phrases. And what's worse is I know that person is already coming back because my viewers just went up by two. So I'm about to deal with it again. But back to the, we're, we're literally talking about a little girl who was abducted, raped, and killed. And people want to come in here and literally make fucking autism jokes. That's how lowly these pieces of shit are. That's why I, I don't sit there and argue with it. I don't sit there and really give many any time of day. I caught that shit. I ban it. I leave it. Because if I give it any more fucking attention, I'm going to give myself an aneurysm. Police Scotland charged Campbell with abduction, rape, and murder on the 5th of July. Like three fucking days later. Okay, well they found her at, on July 3rd, so that would make sense. So they arrested him. No, they charged him on the 5th. So they probably arrested him on the 3rd or the 4th. Okay. I have never heard the phrase Smurf account. I will have to look that up. I, right now I really just have my Nightbot set up to like drop my links and catch people who say really stupid shit like base words. Um, the teenager denied any involvement and pled not guilty when his trial began on the 11th of February. Oh, four days before my birthday. That sucks. 2019. He logged a special defense of incrimination by claiming that Robert McFay's girlfriend, Tony Mc... McLaughlin, just like brand new accounts made for single user trolls. I'm... yeah. I'll, I'll have to play around with that after I'm done. I have to YouTube everything to know how to use anything. Uh, his girlfriend, Tony, was responsible for murdering, murdering the child and framing him. Campbell was tied to the crime by CCTV footage, DNA, and fibers from his clothing. The jury returned a guilty verdict after three hours of deliberation. A ban on publicly naming Campbell was lifted following his conviction. On the, 24, on the 21st of March 2019, he was handed a life sentence with a minimum term of 27 years, subsequently reduced to 24 years on appeal. He confessed to the crime before sentencing, adding that he was quite satisfied with the murder. Wow. So he changed his fucking attitude real fast. The case generated a large amount of media attention in the United Kingdom with the presiding judge, Lord Matthews, stating that he could not think of a crime in recent times that has attracted such revulsion. The perceived safety of the Isle of Butte contributed to the public shock, while the young age of the culprit prompted discussion and debate around the nature of underage murderers. Alicia McFeel... Alicia Sarah McPhail was born in Glas was born in Glasgow Royal Infirmary. I almost said Royal Family on 22nd of I hate how it has it on October 22nd 2011. She lived in Airday, North Lancashire, with her mother Georgina Lockrane and her younger sister Courtney, age four. She attended Chapelside School and was recently completing Primary Two at the time of her death. She was described by her head teacher as a smiley and happy young girl who loved being at school and enjoyed all aspects of literacy, in particular writing. Her favorite activities include gymnastics and cake baking. Oh, at least there's actual some information on this kid. That's always good. They always, they're always like, he like trucks. There's so much more to a child than that. McPhail's parents separated when she was three months old. Her father, Robert, 26, lived in Rothesey, the principal town on the Isle of Butte with his parents and his girlfriend Tony, age 17? He was 26 and she was 17, but we're not going to talk about that, huh? Alicia would visit her father and grandparents every weekend. On June 28, 2018, at six years old, she joined her family in Rothensee for what was meant to be three weeks of the school, school summer break. Aaron Thomas Camp... Oh, it's because it fucking sat over Peppa Pig for a sec. I thought I got to add... Aaron Thomas Campbell was born in... Oh, 
Autism Speaks official rating with a party of five. Thank you so much. I think you guys just missed an awesome incident when I, that I just had with a bunch of trolls. That's great. Oh, I appreciate that, hun. Trust me, my Discord is mostly just all of us making horrible jokes. And if I'm going to talk about stuff, I'd rather just say it on Twitch. If I got a, something serious to say, I just say it. But uh, thank you, Autism Speaks, for the raid. That's awesome of you, and hopefully it's not just a bunch of bots. <laughs> uh, he moved to the Isle of Butte when he was four or five years old with his mother, Jeanette, father, Christopher, and younger sister. Campbell's upbringing, including elements of physical and emotional abuse, and he often argued with his alcoholic mother. He was tested for attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, ADHD, and had a history of self-harming and depression. Oh, uh, anyone coming from that that's not a bot, somehow, I hope, uh, we're doing True Crime Tuesday, just for warning, if there's anything anyone is sensitive about. Oh god, so let me guess, I need to go ahead and block you. Yeah, of course, because for some fucking reason, again, just, I really hate people. And what's worse is that I should have actually realized it because of the autism speaks thing, because yeah, they're the ones that are fucking telling parents to give their kids industrial bleach to fix their autism because people are fucking horrible. But anyway. Had a history of self-harming and depression. He attended Roxy Academy and was popular amongst his friends with whom he regularly drank alcohol and attended parties. He was fit and active while also keen on gaming. He wished to be a YouTube star and posted several videos to the website. When he was age 15, Campbell began to consider doing something excessive such as rape. In 2017, he sent a Facebook message saying that he might kill one day for the lifetime experience. Yeah, no, see, my, my, uh, my view count never actually went up, so it was a fake raid. I do know those are a thing. But again, it's adorable because now I'm literally just going to get chased down with autism hate because, yeah, that's hilarious. Let's, that's great. Anyway... Uh, Mike Kill one day for the lifetime experience. He was entered into a rehabilitation program when he was caught starting fires. Campbell was acquainted with Tony McLean and Robert McPhail and claims to have had a casual sexual relationship with Tony in the winter of 2017. Well, they would have been the same age, so it would have been realistic. Hi, Dahmer. Uh, you want to be a mod? <laughs> My man, I need someone. I've been getting autism hate bots in the chat, which has been great, been dealing with that. Uh, we're now on the case of Aaron Campbell, who abducted six-year-old Alicia, Alicia McPhail. Um, before that, we touched on the QAnon guy. I'll talk to you about that later. It depends on whether or not you have a computer, but... Um, yeah, anyway, I'll talk to you with that later. Uh, the abduction. Uh, Campbell was acquainted with Tony and Robert McPhail and claims to have had a sexual, casual sexual relationship with Tony in the winter of 2017. He purchased cannabis from the couple on multiple occasions, but these interactions ceased in early 2018 following a disagreement and intervention of Campbell's mother. On July 1st, 2018, three days into her summer visit, Alicia was put to bed in her room in her grandparents' seafront home with a Pepe Pig DVD playing at around 2300, so 11 o'clock. Tony checked on the child and noticed that she was asleep. The key was left in the front door, as is common in Rothesay. At the same evening, 16-year-old Campbell invited 15 friends to his house where he became drunk. The party finished before midnight, but at 
12.30 on July 2nd, a friend returned and found Campbell in bed and suicidal. Campbell claimed, I was quite upset as my mom has been arguing with me most of the night. The friend was quite worried for him and offered to stay over, but Campbell declined and said he was going to get stoned. Campbell sent messages. Oh, thank you, Aiden, for the beats. You're awesome. Thank you. That does make me feel a little better after dealing with the autism haze. <laughs> Oh, shit. It's been a weird day. Um, I hope you're having an awesome night, hun. I hope you're enjoying the stream for what it is. There's a vid of him getting 27 years. Oh, there's a vid of his, uh, uh, his actual conviction? I will fucking look that up right quick a dicky. Yep, Aaron Campbell Court. Totally gonna touch on that. Well, my stream just got better, so thank you so much. Uh, said he was gonna get stoned. Campbell sent messages to several people asking if they were available to sell him cannabis, including Robert McPhail. At 1.47 and 1.48, he called Tony, but there was no response. Intending to steal the cannabis, Campbell left his house at 1.54 armed with a kitchen knife. He entered the McPhail property, roughly a five-minute walk away, where Alicia's room was closest to the front door, where he found the sleeping girl. Campbell saw a moment of opportunity, later claiming, all I thought about was killing her once I saw her. He lifted a drowsy Alicia from her bed, left the house without anyone noticing, and walked with her along the ocean shore. The child awoke in his arms during the walk. Oh god, kids can sleep so great. Thank you. I don't know if reporting is really going to matter. But yeah, no, my viewership just dropped from 6 to 3, so I think all the bots finally left. Uh, kids sleep so fucking... Kids sleep so hard and that scares me sometimes. He carried Alicia to a secluded location and then arced and murdered her. He threw his clothes into the sea, went home for a shower, then returned to the murder site to retrieve his phone? What? You left... They raided someone else right after you, and they got banned there, too. Okay, well, that's good. At least multiple people are banning them, but that they're just sock accounts. And those... I don't get what those people get out of it. Like, are they just sitting behind their little fucking incel desk, jerking off, going, Hey, I heard another person. Like, what the fuck does it do, man? At 6 a.m. on July 2nd, Callum McPhail awoke for work to see find that his granddaughter was not in her bed and determined that she was nowhere in the house. She had never run away before and her bike remained in the garden. Alicia's grandmother, Angela King, notified the police at 623 while the rest of the family began searching the local area and spreading word of her disappearance. King also made a plea on Facebook encouraging members of the public to help. Tony noticed the missed calls from Campbell's and tried to phone him. At 9.01, Campbell responded, Sorry doesn't matter with two laughing emojis. When asked to look out for Alicia, he wrote, <coughs> oh damn, I'm sure she not went too far. Well, he also can't fucking type. Uh, Police Scotland began a hunt for McPhail using a helicopter to help with the search. A Coast Guard volunteer began searching the shoreline at 6.55, where he discovered the kitchen knife near the McPhail home. Many members of the public also joined. At 8.54, the police were notified by George Williams, a local man who had seen King's Facebook appeal that he discovered Alicia's lifeless and naked body. She was found in a wooded area within the grounds of a former hotel, a 15 minute walk from the McPhail home. Georgina Lacrane, who was 70 miles, 110 kilometers away in Aridae, learned about her daughter's death via King's Facebook page before being escorted to Butte. You found out your kid's dead on Facebook? That's not okay. That is not okay. A post-mortem examination was conducted on July 3rd, 2018. The autopsy included that McPhail received 117 injuries, some of which were caused while she was alive and some of which may have been caused by vegetation. By vegetation? Injuries to her neck and face indicated that she had been gripped, while injuries to her nose and mouth indicated that she had been smothered. Her genitalia sustained catastrophic injuries. Oh, God. The pathologist determined her death to be the result of significant forceful pressure to her neck and face. Again, it just sounds like he crushed her head. 
Police Scotland opened a murder investigation following the results of the autopsy. Police Superintendent Hazel Hendren, the local police commander, stated that every available resource from across Police Scotland is being made available to this major investigation. Detective Superintendent Stuart Houston made a powerful plea for information from the public. The police conducted searches at the McPhail residence while heavily patrolling the streets of Butte and making house-to-house -house inquiries. Several parts of the island were cordoned off while forensic expert, ex, experts searched for evidence. Investigators believe that from an early stage, the murderer remained on Butte. Jeanette Campbell, the, form, the mother of Aaron Campbell, helped with the initial search for McPhail in response to the police request for information. She checked the CCTV system installed outside her home and found footage of her son leaving and returning twice during the hours that McPhail disappeared. She quizzed him over his whereabouts. He insisted that he knew nothing about the case. Jeanette was pleased with his response, but nevertheless reported the footage to police to remove any suspicion. See, not the best mother for believing her son, but good person for still handing that footage over to the cops. It doesn't matter what you find, even if your kid ends up being guilty, give that shit over to the cops. Hi Ivy, thank you so much for being here. Aren't you glad you missed the autism hate bots? They were fun. Uh, Remove any suspicion. Campbell was initially interviewed by Detective Constable Gavin McKellar and Detective Sergeant Stephen Hendry. Hendry. As a possible witness, he cooperated with the questions, showing no signs of worry or intimidation, and claimed that he had been buying and smoking cannabis. He was arrested on suspicion of murder on the 4th of July and taken into police station in Glasgow, where he answered no comment to all questions. That's not the response. Oh yeah, no, they were super fun. I need to find me a moderator who can actually show up every day and deal with that shit, because... I would rather just read the horrible things I'm reading instead of having to deal with the horrible things being said to me. <laughs> On July 13th, he appeared at Greenock Sh Sheriff Court and did not submit a plea. Campbell appeared at the High Court in Glasgow on the 10th of December in 2018 for indictment proceedings. <clears throat> he entered a not guilty plea to the charge of abducting, rapping, and murdering Alicia McPhail. A, tra a trial was set for February 2019 with Ian McSporin, QC, acting as persecutor, and Brian McCanchy, QC, acting as Campbell's defense advocate. A second charge of attempting to defeat the ends of justice was dropped during the trial. Because he was younger than 18, the media were banned from reporting Campbell's name for the duration of the trial. Fuck that, man. I appreciate you guys. I just, I just try to avoid it. Just fucking ignore it. What else can I do? Giving it any credence, giving them any attention just makes them feel important. And that's the one thing they don't need. They don't need to feel important. They need to feel as small and minuscule and stupid as they can. A trial began on 11, on the February 11, 2019, presided over by Judge Lord Matthews. The court was shown CCTV footage from cameras installed by Campbell's mother that captured the defendant leaving his house at 1.54 and returning at 3.55, then leaving and returning again for two short periods before 4.07. Additional CCTV footage supplied by members of the public showed an individual walking along the shoreline at 2.25 and 2.26 appearing to be carrying something in his arms. Pathologist Jim Williams testified that McPhail's feet were clean and uninjured, suggesting she had been carried. Janet Campbell confirmed that several items recovered from the beach after McPhail's death, a fleece jacket, jogging bottoms, boxer shorts, a t-shirt, and a kitchen knife, belonged to her son and came from her kitchen. No, he did take the kitchen from his own home. Okay. He did take the kitchen from his own home. He took the kitchen knife from his own home. Belonged to her son and came from her kitchen. Fibers from the trousers were found on McPhail's discarded pajamas, and forensic scientist Stuart Bailey testified that DNA matching the accused was found on beach clothing. He further confirmed that a DNA sample taken from McPhail's neck had a billion to one chance of coming from anyone but Campbell. DNA matches were also found on McPhail's face, 14 parts of her body, and some on her clothing. A cybercrime expert told the court that on July 3rd, Campbell used his phone to Google search, how do police find DNA? 
if you're gonna kill someone, don't fucking Google it, okay? Go with whatever's in your head. Don't Google shit. Don't Google directions. Leave your phone in your house. I shouldn't be giving you advice on how to commit a murder. I don't know what I'm talking about. Never mind. Then I visited a website titled Collecting DNA Evidence. A 16-year-old girl testified that hours after McPhail's body was discovered, Campbell filmed himself in a Snapchat video, sent to a group of 25 people with the words, found the guy who's done it. Oh, you dumb motherfucker. Just remember, they're also wasting their own breath on your time. See, like, like you said earlier, I got some views for it. Okay, I'm not gonna bitch. They were views. In his defense, Campbell claimed that he spent the early hours of July 2nd procuring cannabis and searching for his lost phone. Two young men testified that they had received messages from the defendant but not meet him that night. Campbell logged a special defense of incrimination in which he argued that Tony was responsible for McPhail's death. He took the witness stand and claimed McPhail had sex with him in the garage that night. He then suggested that she murdered, Mc... that she murdered McPhail and used the condom to plant his semen on the child's body. You know, I happen to not believe that kid. Campbell's lawyer asserted that Tony was jealous of the attention McPhail received and that her relationship with Alicia's father was physically abusive. Mc... Uh, Tony denied all of his claims, adding that she loved the child to pieces. Angela King, Angela King McPhail's grandmother, testified that Alicia and Tony had a great relationship. Unlike the defendant, 18-year-old McLean was named in the media throughout the trial. Of course she was. Campbell answered the questions for two hours, offering explanations for the prosecution's evidence while appearing strikingly composed, unfazed, and articulate, according to a journalist of the Guardian, for The Guardian. He told the court that he had never met Alicia McPhail and denied murdering her by stating, absolutely not, I could never do that. He agreed that placing the blame on an innocent person would be evil, Campbell confirmed that he could bench press 110 pounds. The prosecution argued that Tony conversely did not have the strength to carry 49 pound Alicia from her house to the murder site. Bitch, who can't carry 49 pounds? The trial lasted nine days. The jury deliberated for three hours before returning to a unanimous returning a unanimous guilty verdict on February 21st. Lord Matthews described the evidence against Campbell as overwhelming and stated that the teenager had committed some of the most wicked and evil crimes this court has ever heard of in decades of dealing with depravity. Campbell remained emotionless during upon hearing his conviction. A group of media outlets made a legal bid for the teenager to become publicly identified, arguing that his transparency was in public interest. Following the trial, Lord Matthews agreed to reverse the naming restriction of first in Scottish history due to the unique nature of the case. All right, all right, now we're gonna watch the video. I'm gonna assume it's this one. Make it big for y'all, make it loud. You were found guilty of the abduction, rape, and murder of Alicia McPhail. They can make him stop wearing those child. stupid ass wigs. Merely stating that fact is horrific enough, but the circumstances surrounding these vile crimes and the manner of their commission have quite these vile crimes. Revulsion I can't and speak Scottish. That these sorts of things could happen. Alicia had just arrived on Butte to spend a holiday with her father and grandparents, and had gone to bed apparently safe in her own room. No doubt she was looking forward to what the next few weeks had in store. Her father and his parents would have enjoyed every minute. Oh my god, it's been so long since I've seen Sons of Anarchy. Aren't they about to bring it back? Like, I thought they were about to do a continuation of it. And it's all it, while her mother and her family I'm not supposed to do that on camera. would have been counting down the days till we saw her smiling face again. Meanwhile, you attended a party at your own home, consumed alcohol, and then, on your account, to which I will return, went off in search of cannabis. Oh, maybe that's you what it was. I haven't seen the Mayans either. Bedroom. You removed her from there. Yay, smoke sesh with the chat. Spot, where you violated I'm not smoking alone for that. In the most brutal fashion. The details of that were revealed in the evidence, and I do not intend to go over them again. 
It is difficult to imagine the distress which her family must have suffered, not only when she went missing, but when the awful news came in that she had been found dead. That distress can only have been intensified, if that was possible, by their finding out the extent of what you did to her, not only in the weeks and months immediately afterwards, but in the course of the trial. I have read statements by her parents and grandparents. I do, totally. To express their I'll 100 do smoke sessions on Discord if anyone fucking day. joins me. Just as I know that no sentence which I can pass will alleviate their anguish, so I know that mere words are pure reflections of it. The effect on the island community was profound. Many of them rallied round to help in the search. I mean, it's definitely got to be a podcast, so I don't get fucking slammed by Twitch death. Lasting. I have never before seen a police officer almost break down in the witness box, so affected was he by the sight. The contrast between them and you could not be more vivid. And again, guys, if you're not in the Discord, get in the Discord so we can finally do fun stuff, because I'm just in there by myself making horrible jokes. Your attitude was clearly demonstrated by the evidence that you posted an image of yourself in a mirror while making a joke that you had found where the murderer was hiding. The arrogance and callousness of that is breathtaking. Thanks to the dedication of the police and forensic scientists, ably assisted by members of the public, such as those who came forward when they found articles of your clothing on the shore, you were eventually brought to justice. Despite the overwhelming evidence against you, you did not plead guilty but elected to go to trial. That was your right, and I do not increase your sentence because of it. However, it is symptomatic of your staggering lack of remorse. Ooh. Not once during the trial did I detect a flicker of emotion from you, and that was also the experience of the professionals who interviewed you for the purpose of the reports. That was such a good fucking point from the judge. I really got to point that out because that is some shit you would really wouldn't see in an American court. Like we will, we you have a right to go to trial, but then we will totally use that against you. But I, but in his own point, he's like, I'm not using it against you, but it does make a really good point about how narcissistic as fuck you are. Hey, dude, I'm learning too, okay? I have no idea what I'm doing. I didn't hop on Twitch until last year, and I only did it for like a month. And I watched people, but because I was watch, always watching on mobile, I didn't know how to do anything. And like, I've only been on Discord for like maybe three months. I still don't know what I'm doing. I don't even know my commands. I'm still trying to figure out how to make my Discord. I've got like a hundred people in it, but I don't know what I'm doing. And thank you. <laughs> I don't feel adorable. I feel really, mostly dumb. To which I would sound shocked, but your, your defense was one of incrimination of a young woman, Tony Louise McLaughlin, and you gave evidence in support of it. It was a cruel travesty of the truth, which was understandably reported widely in the media and left her open to suspicion at the very least, and quite possibly hatred, all of which was due to your perverted machinations. I am very grateful to Mr. McConaughey, who today made it clear that she was completely innocent. Ms. McConaughey has said all that could be said on your behalf, Cheers. entirely in keeping with the exemplary way the trial was conducted on both sides of the bar. All matters of fact which could reasonably be agreed where I've watched so many videos on Twitch well and how it works, bro, and trust me. The jury. As I said to the jury after they returned their verdict, counsel do not make up defences, but present the case on the basis of their instructions. Yay, Dahmer! Hope your food was good. Were, and you you keep leaving me! Now in keeping with them, albeit it was a tissue of lies. It does not go too far, therefore, when I say that I was shocked when I saw the contents of the Criminal Justice Social Work Report and the report from Dr. McPherson, the consulted forensic clinical psychologist. Each of these reports contains clear admissions by you of your guilt. Not only oh my god, I know it does, because, like, that's so the thing that gets me. It's got so much technical shit to countless, it. Countless like, setting up night bot was a nightmare. Individual. I do not intend to go into uh, every detail of the reports or of your Well, I hope you don't have AT&T, because I've been, been having to do that a lot with my phone lately. And much of it merely confirms some of the evidence which was laid. Also, well, sir, you're right supposed to sex the hot pot, not eat the hot pot. Everyone knows that. Dr. McPherson noted that you presented your account in a matter-of-fact manner, notable for the absence of any emotions. He recorded that you told him that in the 12 months prior to the murder, you entertained thoughts of doing something excessive, including rape. Your account, in brief, 
was that you had been drinking but wanted cannabis and decided to break into the house to get some. But again, Kitchen it was for knife. nothing. Because Besides, you, you wanted to, you little fuck. But having gained entry, you left the house and disposed of it. You returned to the house and entered Alicia's bedroom. Amongst other things, Dr. McPherson records that you told him that you had consumed one and a half bottles of wine between 8 o'clock and 8.30, but that you did not feel intoxicated, although you told the social worker that you still felt the effects of it. You were not under the influence of any illicit substances. Because he couldn't get me. But dude, you don't get to use I couldn't get weed so I killed your kid as a fucking excuse. At any other time in life, murder wouldn't have been the conclusion. If I was a year younger, I don't think I would have done it. All I thought about was killing her once I saw her. What the You told both Dr. McPherson and the social worker in some detail what you did. You said that Alicia was drowsy and became a bit more awake when you went outside. At one point she asked who you were and where you were going. You said you were a friend of her father's and that you were taking her home. Like, you even lied to the kid, man. Like, fuck you. Right? Like, just let that sink in. Like that wig sits on the top of his forehead. Like, he's just glaring at the kid. You gave her your talk because she was cold. What? I will not go into the horrific and cold-blooded details of what you said you did to her. But you explained that after you murdered Alicia, you threw your bloodstained clothing into the sea, had a shower, and then went back where you left her to retrieve your phone. Dr. I'm still amazed by the left your the phone bit. Days, you were totally unconcerned, other than to be mildly amused that the police had not arrested you. Mildly amused. Two other aspects of his report are worth mentioning. The first is that you told him that at points during the trial, it took everything to stop you laughing, and you had to zip your mouth. The second is... The trial that he's in right here, right now, where the judge is literally talking to you, and you had to keep your mouth zipped from laughing. Oh my god, walking, talking, living, breathing piece of fucking shit. But you volunteered that you are quite satisfied with the murder. Cunt doesn't fucking cover that. According to all of the reports, you are not suffering from any mental health disorder, and indeed you are not suffering from any syndrome or disorder of any kind. Bro, okay, if you have the random and desire to just kill a fucking kid, you have empathy, something wrong with you. Social worker noting your cold, calculating manner. The only sentence I can impose on you is detention without limit of time. In addition, you will be subject to the notification provisions of the Sexual Offences Act 2003 for an indefinite period. However, I also have to specify a period which must pass before you can apply for release on parole. Whether oh, if you had to sit in jail with them, he's lucky he, he didn't get to him. Bro, that's, that's how I feel about all those people. Have to be done to change you like anyone who hurts a kid. Consider. Like, I'm not one of those... I've said this in, a, in another stream. I don't advocate for prison rape whatsoever, but I do wholeheartedly believe that there should be a different section of the law that handles people who hurt children because you are quite literally hurting the most innocent of our community, the future of our world. You are actively making the future a worse place by hurting a child. So I believe that needs to be in a whole special section of its fucking own where you don't get any, like, you get put back in medieval prison standards. We just throw you in a cold concrete room with no clothing and we feed you bread and water and just fuck you. So, the period I select is known as the punishment part of the sentence and its purpose is to satisfy the requirements of retribution and deterrence. The parole board is any of this going to be his reaction or is it just the, the, the judge public. speaking? I have taken account of the circumstances of the offences, the contents of the reports, and everything said on your behalf. Oh no, you probably came back I at a better time. You missed all the like child. really bad stuff. Don't in worry. In children, it has to be borne in mind that they are not yet fully rounded, mature human beings. You missed the harassment in the, the chat, so it's good for that. Primary consideration and the desirability Here after this the video, we're going to be hopping over to Dragon Age, so must also be taken Yay. into account. However, the weight to be given to the various sentencing considerations will depend on a number of factors, including the age of the child and all the circumstances of the case. 
The nature of these appalling offences and what I have read in the reports make it clear to me that reintegration and rehabilitation... Oh, no, no, no. I was saying that how I would treat uh, pedophiles or child killers or anyone who hurts kids, I would put them in a medieval-style prison hole that it's, it's just a concrete hole and you feed them nothing but bread and water, you chain them up naked, and then you fucking forget about their existence. While these are important considerations, are remote possibilities, and neither your best interests nor anyone else's will be served by a speedy return to the community. Oh, they weren't allowed to show his face at this point? Oh, okay, yeah, so it would have been after this point that uh, his name was unrescinded. July 2018. You will be detained without limited time, and that fits the punishment part in 27 years. Oh, what? Does he scream at the end? Is that his mom crying? Dumbass. Successfully appealed a sentence, reducing the minimum term from 27 to 24. Oh, yes. Meaning he will be eligible to apply for parole when he is 40? I don't fucking accept that. That's too much of his life to hurt someone else. Three judges ruled <coughs> that the original sentence had been excessive for his age. No, it fucking wasn't. And how is three years any different? But they did not dispute Lord Matthews suggesting that the appellant may never be released. Campbell is in prison at the H.M. Young's Offenders Institution Parliament and will be moved to an adult prison when he turns 21. Uh, and the memorials, which... That's just sad. But I'm glad that there were memorials and that people really cared about this little girl. It was obvious that they very much cared about this little girl. Uh, and just for reference, said little girl, being that little girl, just want to put her face back up there. Just put him in gen top and tell everyone that touch kid. No, no, see again, uh, my, my stance is again, I don't advocate for prison rape whatsoever. I don't advocate as rape as a means to get someone else to feel what you want them to feel because it's never going to work. Eye for an eye does not work. What you need to do is show these people the least amount of humanity possible. Oh yeah, no, no. I can think of a million ways to make it hell that don't involve them being put near anyone else. People in prison who are stuck in prison, a whole bunch of them shouldn't be there to begin with. So like you gotta look at the prison system as a whole before we ever get to this point. That's why I said that people who do shit to kids are on a whole different fucking level of criminal asshole. And they just, they need to be separated from the normal poor people in fucking prison who are there for selling weed or being a crackhead, or addicted to meth, or stealing because they're poor, or, you know, any of the other reasons that people get put in jail because, you know, shit happens. Most of them aren't murderers, most of them aren't rapists, and the ones that are, are fucking protected, and it's bullshit. Palamon is the hardiest jail in Scotland. I mean... From what I understand, the jails in the UK are not that fucking bad, but I also live in America. Uh, the American prison industrial complex, we, we literally create the game for horrible fucking jails, seriously. But, we're gonna pop over to the game now. Oops, put you down. Hey, chat bubble, will you work? Game overlay. Okay, don't then. Just fucking don't do that then. Whatever. Yay! Back to the game. Game! Got my headphones on. Got my controller right in ya. Hope I get in a fight. Because this shit all pissed me off real good. And I want to kill something. Alright, well, um, I hope everyone has a great night. Um, I hope everyone eats something great. Make sure to play something cool. Uh, make sure to check out all of my links over here.
Make sure to check out my link tree. It's got my OnlyFans, my Etsy, uh, all my other social medias and stuff like that. Uh, we're going to do a raid. See who we're going to raid. All right. Ooh, Detroit become human. That'll be fun. All right. Well, I hope you guys have a great night, and I hope everyone has fun. Uh, make sure to add me on everything, and closer.